Hi guys, um, my name is Patrick, and uh, I run a small design studio quite close to here in Peckham. And uh, today, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, why I think being a designer is the best job in the world. And there's been a lot of amazing people come up and speak today, uh, done really some success successful stuff, and it can be a little bit daunting. Um, so to start off, I really just want to talk about how I got into design in the first place. Um, so whenever I was growing up, you know, I had these ambitions of being a world-class footballer or I was going to be a, you know, a famous scientist working on cutting-edge research or I was going to really you know, explore the, the boundaries of you know, the universe by travelling through space. But unfortunately, my careers class at school didn't offer any of these things. Um, but I always enjoyed building stuff and making things. So somebody said to me, well, why not think about a career in design? And I had a couple of ideas about what design was. I hadn't really had many interactions with it before. Um, but I thought, you know, it sounds quite cool. I could, I could get on board with that. So I traveled around uh, all of the UK, going from one design school to the next, looking at what they had to offer. And in general, they pretty much supported what I thought design was all about, like making finely crafted furniture and doing you know, beautiful renders and technical drawings. Uh, that was until I finally found myself up in the, the top east of Scotland in a place called Dundee, which is cold all year round. Uh, I didn't know anything about it apart from it was famous for jute, jam and journalism. Um, but I wasn't really interested in any of those things. It was the product design department that really captured my imagination when I was there. Uh, it was the first time that I'd seen people, you know, playing about with electronics and programming and uh, it really challenged my ideas about what design was all about and what it meant to be to be a designer. And the staff there were so enthusiastic, I thought, you know, this is, this is the place that I've got to be. Um, I just knew it was right. And whilst I was at Dundee, uh, it really, like I say, sort of completely challenged my perspective of design as a discipline and how I could get into being a professional designer and what I could do as that role. Um, and it's really shaped the, the way that we work in the studio now. And uh, a lot of those things that I've learned uh, are very much at the core of the studio's ethos. So the, the first thing that I figured out wasn't quite true was this myth of the superstar designer. Uh, so you've got people like uh, Mark Newson, Johnny Ives, you know, two of Britain's most famous and successful designers. Uh, these guys are the face of a lot of products, you know, being produced by Apple, and you know, they get a lot of the glory. But in reality, any successful design project requires a lot of people to get involved with vast different skills. So, you know, we've already heard from people who play around with electronics and coders, but it also needs model makers, people to do artwork, people to think about the systems that run behind this. So any design project really requires a high degree of collaboration. And this is something that is very much at the heart of most of the projects that, that we do in the studio. In particular, one project that we needed a lot of collaboration on was uh, when we decided to try and build our own particle accelerator. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know what a particle accelerator is, um, it's a giant sort of donut-shaped science experiment that is uh, currently sitting at CERN uh, in Geneva underneath the ground. And it sort of whizzes matter around to almost the speed of light until it collides those together and then scientists have a look to see what happens. Um, and at the time of the project, CERN and the Large Hadron Collider was in the news all the time. And it was really, really exciting. And we thought, God, this is amazing. These, you know, these particle physicists are doing such incredible stuff. How can we get involved? Like, how can we build our own particle accelerator? How, how hard could it really be? Um, but it turned out it was pretty hard. Um, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, it took quite a long time to build. It took a few billion dollars to make. We didn't really have quite the same budget as they did. Um, so we thought, well, how can we do this by using just products and things that we can buy off the shelf? So uh, we spoke to a lot of different physicists, called a lot of them up, and the ones that didn't hang up the phone straight away um, thought we were mad. Um, the ones that stayed on the phone probably still thought we were mad, but thought, okay, right, let's try and give this a go. Let's see how far we can get. 
Uh, so this project took a lot of collaboration and we really wanted to make it um, completely by hand. So all the electronics, all the sort of mechanical systems, uh, you know, going as far as to blow the glass for the, the vacuum chambers. And in the end, after a lot of work, we ended up with our version of a particle accelerator. Now, it's not exactly the same as the ones that exist in CERN, um, but it was a fantastic way to actually talk about um, how, as a non-scientist, I could get involved in science and how I could sort of communicate what was going on at CERN to a very different type of audience. Uh, so this particular piece was shown at really sort of um, non-scientific contexts, like uh, one of the, the largest department stores in, in Europe, for instance, as well as um, sort of science fairs and sort of music venues as well. So it was really bringing science to an audience that maybe would have usually shied away from learning about it. The next thing that I learned at Dundee, which was super important, that I think all the other guys who've spoken today have also shown, is that design isn't just about solving problems. Um, and I think the project that tries to go some way to communicate that was one that um, we did for, uh, for Selfridges. Um, and growing up, you know, I've always been fascinated by space and space travel and the moon. So I was really disappointed whenever uh, NASA broke the news that they were shutting down all their shuttle launches. And I thought, God, there's my last chance of being a NASA astronaut gone. Um, but at the same time as this, there was more and more growing commercial space flight and uh, running into the sort of second space race between countries like uh, Iran and India and China. So we thought, you know, this is a fascinating time to think about, well, what happens next in the world of space? What is Earth's relationship with the moon now that we're no longer going there with the NASA space program? Um, so we got in touch with NASA, uh, as you do, and I think, well, what, what happens now that you guys are stopping your taxi service to space? Um, and we spoke about, well, why would people want to go to the moon, uh, you know, now that Probably within your guy's lifetime, you know, almost anyone is going to be able to go into space at some point. Um, why even bother going? Uh, so we worked with NASA and talked about, you know, the intentions of going to space and what constraints actually exist to design something to go to space. Um, and, you know, we thought, well, why is it just those guys that get to decide what happens up there? Um, so we really approached this project from a, a very strong sort of storytelling point of view because one of the things that we really try and um, put forward in, in our studio is this idea of design as a way to tell stories through physical objects. Um, so again, working with, with NASA, we've, we've developed all these sort of different uh, buildings and um, a complete sort of architectural representation of what it might be like for people in the future who would live off Earth. Uh, so an incredible thing that NASA have done is they've mapped the entire surface of the moon um, down to about uh, half a meter uh, accuracy. And we thought, you know, this is incredible. For now we can start to really plan and build a, an accurate topology of the moon and think about the type of structures that might exist there. Uh, so after we built this version of the moon, we started to populate it with different architectural structures. And each one of the buildings that we made had a very in-depth story to it. Um, because we really wanted to use this project as a chance to ask, you know, what, what else can design do apart from building tables and chairs? And, you know, I really feel that design is a way to, to question the future and to question the status quo and as a chance to really challenge uh, and build the future that we want rather than the one that is necessarily just on the trajectory that we're on. So at this point I thought, okay, well maybe I didn't end up being that sort of famous scientist that I wanted or maybe I didn't end up being that astronaut, you know, traveling to the moon. But Design has opened the door for me to work with so many incredible people that I wouldn't have been able to work with otherwise. You know, that's the amazing thing, I think, about being a designer, is that it transcends so many different disciplines that it really is an adventure. And I think I feel really lucky to be able to be working as an adventurer, really, is how I feel about it more than necessarily a designer. 
Um, so this is really what I want to try and communicate to you guys today, that you know, being a designer is about building stuff, and it's about uh, you know, communicating things, but it's also about sort of challenging what already exists, and it's about trying to build things for the future and determine you know, the future for the whole planet. So that's my challenge to you guys, is to go out there and have an adventure and uh, communicate with different types of people and collaborate with each other and really, yeah, build the future that you all want. Because, um, yeah, it's, the future is in your hands, not to sound too cheesy. Um, but, yeah, so that's, that's my challenge to you guys. Go and be a designer. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks so, much. so, Patrick. When, when you say to people, you know, when you, when you ring up these scientists and you say, I want to build a handmade particle accelerator, or, or we want to work out how to colonize the moon, do you get funny looks? Uh, yes, those that will even stay in touch with you long enough to give you a funny look, yes. But it's amazing, actually, how many people working in these different industries really want to engage in this sort of way. I think uh, the most interesting byproduct for all of these projects has actually been the response of the scientists that we've worked with. So many of them have never even thought about how their work and their research can be communicated or portrayed in this way. So I think they actually find it really exciting as well. Thank you very much, Patrick Stevens, for speaking. Thank you.